Okay, today I am making a bed lift. Um, I've got four of these rails and this rail system that ended up being a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be, but uh, beefier is better, I guess. So these wheels fit right into these tracks, but these tracks are gonna be set uh, vertically. So we're gonna have one there, one there, over here and over here and uh, that is going to be what holds my bed frame in place. Then I'm building a mechanism to hand crank the bed so it slides up and down the rails. So for starters I gotta cut these, they're, they're about an inch too long so I gotta cut about an inch off of them and then um, I'm going to mount them on the wall. I also don't have all the parts I need to do this yet, so I'm going to get about as far as I can uh, without uh, the cable and some of the hardware that I need. As you can see, I've cut an inch off of each of these, uh, so they're just one inch shorter than they were when I got them, and uh, I've put these dots where I'm going to be drilling holes for bolts to hold these in place. They will be placed right on the framing inside the bus, so hopefully everything is nice and solid. All right, so I've drilled one hole. Uh, I gotta drill all the way through so that this bolt will sit in there. Uh, this is the, the slider, and as you can see, it's got a little bumper thing on the end that hits the bolt right in the middle. So uh, the whole point of this is so that it has a minimum height uh, and that's this is basically as, as low as it's going to be able to go is just to this point so it won't be falling out on the bottom and have to and I'll have to deal with putting it back in on a track. Each of these holes is going to be kind of a pain in the ass because this is really thick metal. Um, one thing that I have that kind of helps me out is this little doodad that I actually found. Uh, it, it basically, you, you stick it where you want it to go and then hit it on the head with a hammer and it creates a, uh, a spot for you to put your, your drill bit so it doesn't slip out of that spot. Okay, to, so to secure the rails in place, I'm gonna be using these big gnarly bolts, screws, so they go right into the hole. I don't know if you can see it. Just like that. They'll be screwed in. Sticking out the bottom like that. And then here's a roller and you can see how the clearance works. Right over the top of it. So each one of these rails now has holes in it and is ready to be mounted, but I'm also going to be putting some holes up at the top here for this uh, eye bolt. Um, this is going to anchor the cable that is used to raise and lower the bed. So I'm going to be making some holes right up at the top, probably about an inch down and then an inch in, well, from the front. This is the front, which is on the bottom. and. Uh, that will be for the eye holes. The holes gotta be a little bigger because they're, this is a half inch thick. So, do that now. All right, so we're back in the bus. I've got my four rails pretty much ready to be mounted now. I'm gonna be using these kinds of bolts and pre-drilling uh, pilot holes into studs that are right behind the wall here. Goes all the way down. And right here goes all the way down there too and over over there so I'm gonna be putting the rails up in place drilling the holes and using these bolts to hold them in place I will square them up after I get the first one in and uh, that will be the method I, I have already installed one rail here I've got the slidey part in it already the eyelet and I'm gonna be cutting off this excess thread the reason is because up a, to get this to go into the stud, um, 
I need just a little bit of extra space. It's running into the part right at the top of the bus, which will make sense when I show you uh, what it looks like installed. All right, as you can see, very little clearance between the bolt and the wall. So I cut that piece off just so I could push it all the way up against the wall. And that's pretty much straight, but I'm gonna make sure it's straight before I uh, start drilling. I need to make one more hole right here. Uh, there's a stud that runs crosswise and I wanna absolutely make sure that I get into that stud because that stud's being held up by the wall studs. So um, whether or not that adds any extra strength, I'm not sure, but uh, I really wanna hit that stud. So on all of the beams, I'm gonna go ahead and make another hole. Right, so the first rail is in, just being held on with one bolt. Uh, which I guess you can't, there it is. So I've used my little square here to make sure that we are set up right. And now I'm going to drill and screw in some more bolts. Okay, so I have one rail in. This one is in, it feels really solid. It's got uh, six bolts holding the rail in. This one's in a stud, but unfortunately, all the other ones miss the stud because the width of the rail uh, made me miss it. So um, studs like right about here, and so I missed it. Um, well, that one's actually in. This one is not. So these are only in plywood, but I'm hoping that there's enough anchor points that it won't really matter. The other rail, um, which is arguably more important because that's where everybody's going to be climbing in, um, that is definitely going to be in a stud. But uh, yeah, kind of a bummer, but I don't think in the bigger scheme of things that it will affect my plan. So I'm going to continue forward. Okay, so the third one, definitely going into a stud, but uh, it's not in all the way. It's just kind of hung hanging on the wall right now. I'm going to use the square to make sure that it is square. And then I'm going to measure from this one to this one and this corner to this corner to make sure that everything is even uh, on this side. Here it looks like 50 and 11 sixteenths, and down below, let's do it again. Fifty and eleven sixteenths. I'm perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish screwing this one in. has a 1200 pound capacity each of these rails has a 200 pound capacity 250 pound capacity pulling this way so they and there's not they're not really holding much up I think that they can handle a lot more the way that I have them set up the anchors the eye holes have a capacity of 300 pounds and the winch cable I don't even know 840 pounds. We're not 840 pounds? No. I think we're good on weight.
One more Home Depot run? One more Home Depot run. Probably. Maybe. I might be able to get away without it. Yeah. You know what I call Lowe's and Home Depot? What? The Borg. You know why? Why? Because they're the blue, orange giants and they eat up everything else. They are the Borg. <laughs> All four rails are in. These three have the rollers and the anchors at the top installed, but this last one I'm holding off on that because I need to make mounting brackets for all of the rollers. So I'm going to be taking this roller and using it as a template out there. I'm going to be making it out of a bed frame, some angle iron bed frame. Okay, so. I'm going to be making the bracket out of this piece of angle iron. So, each piece, four holes right here, which are just big enough for my regular screws, and then the bolts all fit on one. So, you can see it's cut four across. So, I have to go do that inside on my vise so that it's held steady while I cut. So, got to set that up now. Okay, so I cut up the brackets and I'm putting them on the vise and putting my trolley over them and centering dots. And now I'm going to drill holes big enough, half inch, so that this can mount to this. I've got two boards cut, 58 and a half inches each. Uh, because a queen is 60 inches, so this will be, you give us an extra inch and a half of a lip um, when I put boards on the ends. This is also the travel distance. So, um, Kate, this is going, these ones are going to go horizontal like this. The cable needs to run from the back to the front, and that pulling action is what's going to pull the uh, um, the trolleys up and down so it's important to have that um, be long enough which it is brackets are installed on one side I did it by putting one on the very end and then putting a, a bolt through it making sure that there's clearance on the far side to uh, clear that little lip up there, which I think there is. Um, but now I'm going to hang it using the bolts. I'm not gonna install it just yet because there's some more I have to do to this board before it goes into place. All right, so that's one board just hanging by one bolt. It's not totally installed yet, but we'll get there. Um, I'm gonna do the same on the other side, and then I'm gonna build the top and back and that will be the frame that I'm working off of uh, for everything else so it should uh, hopefully be pretty sturdy by the time I'm done with it um, but first we need a square okay so the bed is attached at all four corners and the whole thing lifts as one it's heavy and I've I did it by myself but uh, we got to build that mechanism I will show you what I do for that. Okay, so I've got the frame sitting up on some buckets right now. I've got the crank installed and one pulley, two more pulleys. And so I gotta get two more over there and then one on each corner, but I've gotta aim them the right direction. So I gotta do the ones on the corner before I go any further from here. So that's what I'm doing. Okay, so step one, lower the platform to the very lowest point that it can reach and now I'm gonna get rid of a bunch of this stuff that we don't need for this next part pretty much just cable hardware is all I'm gonna need now and some tools and uh, then I'm ready to go on to running the cable
Okay, so now I've got less stuff to kick over while I'm working. I'm just going to start with this one. So that's the anchor point. It's going to come down to this pulley, to this pulley, and then it'll end at a little eye hole um, right around here that it, uh, this will hook into eventually. So let's run that cable. Okay, so I'm working backwards from the anchor points. These are the anchor points up high. Um, so I've clipped on this little cable guide thing, and now I'm going to wrap the cable around it and then use this little guy to crimp it on with this crimper tool. All right, so I've discovered a couple of things. Um, first off, working with this cable is a lot easier than I thought it was going to be, but for what I'm doing right now with the the crimping, that requires three hands. Um, one to hold the, the cables in place and make sure everything's nice and taut, and to guide uh, the crimper, and then two more hands for crimping. Uh, so I'm going to get some help tomorrow, uh, call it for today. Uh, I like the progress that I've made. This is the second day I've been working on this thing. Um, really all that's left is running the cables, testing out the mechanism to make sure it works, and then building out the rest of the platform for the bed, which that last part should be pretty easy the way that it is all set up. So uh, for now, it's bedtime. Day three. And we're gonna run these cables. Julian's gonna help. She hasn't seen what I've been working on yet. So, here we go. Making a loop. We've got two cables in already, um, but putting uh, the little sheath thing for the, the cable loop onto the eye bolt, which is gonna be anchored at the top there. So it's easiest if we run the cable kind of through the direction that it needs to be run. So we've got a cable back here, or a pulley back here. That runs this way. we got another pulley here. Kind of aimed in the right way so that it, it lines up just right with these. I'm, I'm in the way, but yeah. Um, got this, this got a little bit frayed, so I'm going to cut off the end, make it nice and neat. Good thing to have. Taking the cable, I'm going to run it through the eye bolt first. Take the crimps, which look like this, and I'm using two per uh, crimping thing. Crimp point. So I put two on the cable, go around the eye hole, and back into the crimps. And then it's just a matter of cinching it up tight. And then I'm going to have Juline crimp this. So that's one crimp. Go. And go. Wait. Go. Okay. Two crimps. And that's what we get. So now we turned, we have it turned around. The 
eye bolt goes into its anchor point. Eye bolt goes into its anchor point and screw it in. As I screw it in a little bit more, uh, the track will kind of compress a little bit and that tension should hold the uh, bolt in place. Also being sure that the, the direction of the eye bolt is it comes in this way then goes down and around so that um, the strongest point of the bolt is what the cable is hanging on. Good. Now we do the other side. So this hand crank winch is a is a brake winch, and uh, so that means wherever you stop cranking it, that's where it stays. Uh, it's a little bit more expensive than just like a trailer winch, but like a boat winch, but it does what I need it to do. So now I'm going to use this 50 foot uh, winch cable, run it through here, wrap, tie it up. And if I attach it to this, I should be able to hand crank everything up. That's the theory anyway. So let's see how well it works in practice. I'm cranking this way. That's what I want to be up. So it goes this way. So I'm following this schematic. It looks like the cable comes in through here. It goes around the spool. And then I use this hardware to lock it into place. Carriage bowl that looks like it goes right there. And then we've got a locking nut. And so, I'm gonna... okay. Hopefully that holds for a second while I find my wrench. And then we put the nut on. Wound. I've got all of my cables in their respective pulleys. This is the moment of truth. If I crank this, it should pull all of those and pull the entire bed lift out. it'll go and that one definitely needs to be tighter this is our second try see if this um, goes any higher or holds any better Much more even. I'm much happier with that. Yeah. Still, I wish I had more clearance here. But I don't know what else to do about that. Okay, so everything's working great. Um, the only problem I have is that the bed lift or the, the platform doesn't go quite as high as I would like it to go. So to get about six more inches, I'm going to drill this hole big enough so that this locking uh, loop 
can actually go into it. And that should give me five or six more inches. So we'll see how that works. But in order to do that, got to cut this off, uh, drill out the hole, and redo the loop one more time. Question is, is this big enough for the crimps to fit in? It is not. Almost. loopers or crumps. Can you let it out more? definitely higher. Yeah. It's not the six inches I had hoped for, but it clears the door. That was the main goal. Because the door is the minimum. So it's pretty much at the minimum height that I wanted. So I'm happy now. I can be happy. Yay. Now we can get a mattress. No, now we have to build the platform out. Okay, I need all my screws back. So as you can see, I got the top of the platform on. I was debating whether or not I wanted to do plywood because I was a little worried about mold, but I think it's the best way to keep this nice and sturdy. So I put a platform on, I used a pneumatic nailer to put a bunch of brad nails on, and it's a nice solid platform. But uh, the spool is getting a little bit bunched up just because there's 50 feet here, I don't need that much. So I cut the spool. I'm gonna remove what's there, like the excess. And uh, then I'm going to uh, just use the shortened spool and reattach it. So there'll be less cable, but less likely for it to bunch up. Quite a sound it likes to make. All right, so the bed lift is finished. Got the platform all in. Uh, it's really loud when you're cranking it up and down, uh, but once it's in place, it's pretty stable. It doesn't squeak too much. It squeaks a little bit when you get it on and off, but it really feels pretty solid. So uh, I'm happy about it, and it might be time to get a mattress for it. Woohoo! And it's totally off grid because it doesn't have, it doesn't require electricity. It uses manpower to go up and down. It's really not that hard to lift up and down, so. What kind of power? Manpower. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we picked up our bed from Casper. Got we to didn't pick up the bed, picked up the mattress. I built the bed. Yes, as I was saying, we picked up our mattress. They said it would fill up in 90 seconds versus a lot of other ones. 
set at least 24 hours. So, not that we're in a rush to use it. Unpack your mattress in the room where you plan to sleep on it. Lay it on its side. Find the end of the outer plastic wrap and pull it towards you. Once the mattress is unfurled, tear open the inner plastic wrap. Hop on, your mattress awaits. How is it? It's comfy. Sit, Rafi. Thank <laughs> you. 